Greetings to all, Chancellor North Wales here. This is the June July 2019 build. The Douglas C47 Skytrain Airfix 172nd. A friend at the main meeting of the Rexham Model Club asked if someone could build a C47 kit as a commission build for a friend of his. I volunteered and he handed me uh, this kit. He requested that it be done on an airfield display base and uh, very much wanted the D-Day period build so I've decided to do it in a D-Day plus uh, 6 setting so, 6, so June the 12th when they were being used to transport in equipment and cargo and bring out casualties. So these reference photos show the C-47 in its natural setting. The sprue quality is excellent, yet is also distinctly airfix with strong panel lines and soft plastic. Airfix has a slightly chunky feel about it that I must admit I do rather like. And these are the sprues for the detailed parts. Again, moulding quality is excellent and there's a nice couple of nice interesting options with this kit. The decal sheet is crisp and well printed with numerous uh, tiny stencils. Construction began with a cockpit. Pit fit poses few problems, though it is a bit fiddly in places and I would have liked a bit more seat detail along the flight engineers and navigators position and better crew figures. The interior is painted in XF71 with a dark grey floor. It was then dry brushed with a lightened down tone of the XF71 and metallic dry brushing on the floor for wear and tear. Overall fit is great but a lot of test fitting and checking is necessary. Tolerances are very tight so it is easy to get a misalignment especially at the wing root fairing. Are beautifully engineered but you do have to be careful. I use Revell and Deluxe products putty. The Revell putty needed more drying time but it is better for heavier gaps and steps. The main rescribing was on the upper fuselage uh, surfaces. Also a bit of putty on the wing route and places like that but nowhere unexpected. The cabin windows were masked inside and uh, out and were attached with Tamiya extra thin cement. The base coat was a Tamiya mid grey, grey, grey with some block pre shading and block pre lightning on the ailerons, aileron, elevators, and uh, rudder. The lower surfaces were painted Vallejo 71.046 pale blue grey and that was, uh, that went down very well with no problems at all. Vallejo 71116 was applied to the upper surfaces. This revealed a ghost seam on the upper surf fuselage uh, that had to be reworked and resprayed. Ghost seams will often come out with uh, the uh, main coat. The invasion stripes, de-icing strips and anti-glare panel were applied with Vallejo paints. The fuselage invasion stripes gave the main issues and required some rework to get even. I know they weren't even in reality but it is picked up on, on, on models so it's best to try and get it as neat as possible. I added to this uh, project two GMC trucks, USAF AAF personal, personnel set, Hasegawa Jeep and the Airfix Jeep along with some figures from Daypole and uh, Matchbox. These were really central to this uh, theme and dressing things up a bit. The GMC truck uh, built up fairly easily. They were painted in XF67 Nato Green. The canvas covers were XF49 khaki. I made heavy use of Tamiya weathering powders. The Kamiya, the, the carpet monster, ate one, uh, one of the windscreens and I made a replacement from clear plastic. I was a bit disappointed with the FX uh, Jeep kit as it lacked any figures and only had a single Jeep in the set. It was still a good kit that went together well and I decided to build this one with the canvas cover raised. It's not a bad kit and 
plenty of extras and options. The four vehicles, the dry, um, the driver of the open top Jeep was from the LRD DG set by Matchbox. I didn't go overboard with the weathering as this diorama was set on an English airfield. So he presents them here. The uh, spare figures came from uh, my spare box that I've just accumulated over the years. For ease of painting, the selected figures were mounted on pins. I started with a grey base and then worked up from there. I used a brown wash to add depth and shade and then also did some dry brushing to highlight things again. Really quite happy with how they worked out. Flory Pro Modeler wash was used on the upper and lower surfaces of the C47, but that was on a um, base of uh, Johnson's Clear, just to make sure that nothing stuck. The decals went on well with no problems and settled with Microsoft, Microset and Microsol. I cut the decals along the panel lines and then reapplied the setting solution. This just avoids any uh, decal uh, bridges um, across gaps. This is especially necessary for the flying surfaces. And there you have it, pretty close to the finished C-47 with just the aerials missing lovely kit that's all i can say about it builds up very nicely it's satisfying to build and it looks right the c47 is one of those aircraft that just has it looks right from whichever angle you're looking at it and you thoroughly enjoy that the base was a 19 inch by 17 inch picture frame with an mdf uh, backboard i started mark by marking two inch squares then scribed them with a panel line scriber the base color was hand painted uh, black i then airbrushed squares in various shades of gray and scribed in cracks the oil stains were hand applied using uh, tamiya weathering powders i also used a fine line marker to re-emphasize the uh, cracks one edge uh, received a grass verge using flock secured with pva glue on a brown base patches of grass was added to the concrete slab uh, gaps and cracks the edge slabs had a brown uh, dusting uh, where they met the grass verge to imitate uh, mud staining and carryover of soil from the grass to the concrete I did a few test layouts before I was happy with the overall concept and the narrative and I applied an edge motif to the frame using a decal from a spares box and in um, an invasion stripes and uh, the C47 upper colour. This sort of set the theme a bit more for me. Scratch built details were made from plastic card and plastic section as well as wire and uh, pins. Cardboard boxes, wheel chocks, fire extinguisher and toolbox. The packs were personal gear uh, that was uh, cast metal extra parts from the stash. There's one of the GMC trucks. I sort of imagined the two large boxes containing something like a uh, truck or tank or aircraft engines that would be fitted on a Ford operating base or uh, repair facility. The second vehicle I imagine carrying spares, lubricants, all the various bits and pieces necessary to keep the wheels of war uh, rolling uh, six days after the invasion. And there we have it, finished. On the base, everything secured down. The uh, pins on the base of the figures uh, helped set them in place. The narrative that I worked on around this one was that you have a uh, C-47 crew heading for their aircraft. Uh, in front of them, a uh, civilian or, min or passenger from an unnamed ministry gets the uh, nod of approval from the waiting military policeman. While this is going on, the aircraft is being loaded up with its uh, cargo uh, bound for France. We've got the four guys uh, shifting the uh, cargo. You have the uh, an officer, or cargo master, overseeing what they're doing. So, uh, 
with the bits and pieces while by the undercarriage leg there are two mechanics maybe checking uh, for an oil leak or just doing some final maintenance on a troublesome area there's the jeep the airfix jeep and that came out very nice i feel again another view of the uh, main theme and the uh, gmc trucks And a couple more views as I've given this model to someone the photos are my main reminder of this project a nice view looking uh, back over the aircraft the box was very kindly made up for me by some guys at my works dispatch department and I added to it some uh, images of the real aircraft uh, the actual Kilroy was here and uh, a little note about the background and the setting for this scene. It also made it far easier to transport. On one hand, I really enjoyed this build, but because it was for someone else, I was less able to relax with this project. It also fed into my obsessive side. It was made over two months to a fairly tight schedule, which added to the sense of pr pressure. The quality and sheer buildability of the FX C47 and Jeep cannot be denied. They are great kits, which I can only heartily recommend. My only concern is the poor pilot figures on the C47 and the absence of figures on the Jeep set. This was my biggie for 2019. The bench is now clear, with the next project waiting to go. So, thank you for watching. Happy modelling. God bless. This is Chelsea North Wales signing out.